Apple's 2018 Mac Mini is not like the others. Like the vaunted 2012 model did, it's packing some serious processing power with an available 3.2 gigahertz i7 processor, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and a massive two terabytes of incredibly fast storage. On top of that, even the base model has four Thunderbolt 3 ports, and you can also get 10 gigabit ethernet. It really makes us think why Apple didn't just call it the Mac Mini Pro. When we tested multi-core performance in Geekbench 4, the Mac Mini scored 25,406 points. That's faster than the 6-core i9 in the 2018 MacBook Pro, and not too far behind the base iMac Pro. While testing, we noticed that the i7 Mac Mini CPU reached 100 degrees Celsius shortly after starting our Cinebench R15's 5-run stress test, which is basically Intel's hard limit, forcing the processor to slow down a bit to cool down. When temp stabilized, we noticed that the clock speed would stay between 3.4 and 3.5 GHz, which isn't bad, but lower than we've seen on well-cooled PC systems with the 8th Gen 6-core i7 processor. Based on that, it's possible that this processor isn't running at its full potential. Apple's factory pace scored an average of 1,140 points after 5 runs of Cinebench R15. So let's see if we can increase performance by replacing it with a better performing compound. We decided to start with Cryonaut by Thermal Grizzly, a highly rated non-electrically conductive paste that some of the Apple Insider staff has used in PC builds. As a warning, this is not a step-by-step -step guide, and we don't recommend the procedure for most users. Doing so risks damaging the Mac and will void your warranty. Disassembly of the Mac is fairly straightforward, but does require specialized tools. We use an iFixit kit, which we'll link in the description. Once we removed the mainboard from the chassis, we had to also remove the RAM to be able to remove the cooler. The thermal paste that Apple uses was chalkier than we'd like to see. We used alcohol wipes to remove the factory paste, and then we applied Cryonaut before putting everything back together. We were excited to see how much faster our CPU would run, but after running Cinebench, the score seemed to be lower. The CPU was now dipping down to 3.3 GHz instead of running between 3.4 to 3.5, and our 5-run average resulted in a lower score, 1108 compared to 1140. That's definitely not what we were expecting. We then opened up the Mac Mini and replaced the paste one more time with Cryonaut using a slightly different application method. After another 5 runs, we saw an average of 1108, with the CPU again running at 3.3 GHz once thermal stabilized. Eliminating variables from the previous batch of tests, we switched to the 4K display that was originally attached during our first round of testing for the review, versus the 5K Thunderbolt 3 display we were using. On the lower resolution, we saw a slightly higher average of 1116 points. Like many thermal paste, Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut is labeled as not needing any time to cure, but with scores like these, we decided to let the paste bake in over the weekend to see if we could get some better performance. Come Monday, we now saw an average score of 1122, the highest we've seen since we we replaced the factory paste, but it was still lower than Apple's paste. We opened up the Mac Mini and replaced the paste one last time with Arctic Silver's MX4, another well-rated paste that's half the price of Cryonaut. Our first of Cinebench R15 CPU tests scored 1,195, the highest we've seen so far. Once the fans ramped up and temp stabilized, the CPU stayed between 3.4 to 3.5 GHz and at times reached 3.6 GHz instead of staying at 3.3, like we saw with the Cryonaut thermal paste. Once our 5 runs were complete, we got an average of 1,152, finally a score higher than the original average of 1,140. We then ran Geekbench 4 again, and our multi-core score was 25,800, almost 400 points higher than before. So all said and done, we do have slightly better thermal performance using Arctic Silver MX4, and it could increase a bit once it's cured. We'll report back if we see any difference. We're not sure why Cryonaut didn't perform well. We could have received a bad batch, or it's possible that it doesn't perform as well with this cooling system, which may already be operating at its near maximum capacity. The paste is designed for a beefier cooling system, and it's possible that the heat dissipation capability the Apple provided doesn't need a higher end solution and may be already maxed out. The 6 core 12 thread 8700B CPU is very powerful, which also means that it puts out a lot of heat. In Snazzy Labs' testing of the i3 Mac Mini, he was able to get better results swapping the stock paste to another version of Arctic Silver, resulting in his Mac Mini reaching a maximum of 91 Celsius instead of the previous 100 Celsius and running at a consistent 3.6 GHz under full load. With that said, his Mac Mini was equipped with a base model quad-core 4-thread i3 CPU compared to our 6-core 12-thread i7, which puts out more heat. So what's our final verdict? Well, overall, we don't think swapping out your Mac Mini's thermal paste 
is worth the risk at this time. Sure, you may get a little bit more performance, especially with the base model, but at least with our i7 Mac Mini, it's not as big of an improvement as is possible with the i3 Mini. And overall, we don't think it's worth the risk. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.